Hello everybody, I'm Lauren Duffy and this is Karma Hub. So this interview more than any that I've had in, in quite a while, it got me a little emotional. Uh, my guest, Carrie Medvecki Hardy, she's a nurse, she's Reiki attuned and she works in hospice. So, so she administers Reiki and she connects very deeply with her patients. Um, and, and the life lessons and awarenesses that these people are getting in the last chapter of their life are, are really lessons and, and skills that we should be realizing and taking advantage of like right now. So stick around, listen to this uh, heartwarming discussion, please. <laughs> and, and I hope you enjoy it. Um, hit tap that like button and the subscribe button. Uh, thank you so much. No matter who you are and what stage of life you're in, you should be looking at your your traumas, your physical pain, because that's there for a reason. And how do we let go of that to find that peace and comfort and, and again, let go of that stuff that's weighing us down so that we can evolve to what's next? The beautiful thing about hospice, too, which I'd like to get you know across to everyone is is to not wait until the end, right? You can, you can be in a hospice program for six months, even up to a year, if we know that you are not seeking treatment. But that's the ideal time to start communicating about your feelings and about your traumas and your emotional issues, because releasing those things through vibrational frequency tools can help you find that peace and that comfort before it's truly the end. It's just important to be ready to go when it's time. And it makes it so much more beautiful. You're a Reiki master. Uh, you're I a am. nurse. Yep. And you also do work uh, through hospice. Right. And I do other healing modalities too. In fact, I'd like to talk about the rising star very briefly. Because that's an energy energy healing too, but in, it works differently. And, uh, so that'll, you know, I'll bring that up as it fits. Um, okay. you know, I use the crystals, I use the sound bowls, the tuning forks, anything sound frequency related. Um, okay. so, so how yeah. did you go from, um, be, being a nurse and then I assume you then started getting into hol holistic practices or was it the other way around? H how did that yeah. evolve? Well, um, as soon as I became a nurse and I started working, you know, I, I put my time in everywhere, started in the hospitals, working med surge, moved on to the oncology ward. And that just didn't quite feel right. I didn't like what I was seeing, um, moved. And I, I always knew I wanted to do home care because I had two aunts who had been home care nurses, but you couldn't get into home care until you knew your stuff because you needed the hospitals and the nursing homes behind you to, you know, do all the care coordination. Right. So the hospital just did not work for me. Um, I questioned everything. I've always been that kind of person question gotcha. everything. Why are we doing this? Why isn't it working? Oh, this is working. That's great. But if it wasn't, I always kind of wanted to know why, um, Spend some time in the nursing homes. I thought I could make an impact there. And I, it, that all, it just didn't fit, didn't fit again with me. So I guess in, through my questioning, I found some of the holistic modalities, found the, the American Holistic Nurses Association, went through the program, did lots of self-study, um, found pranic healing, which is also an energy modality. And, okay. and learned a lot about that mind-body-spirit connection, that we're not just physical, right? That's what right. doctors, nurses in general, it's all about the body, right? But not about the mind or our spirit. Right. Like, what are we doing here? Why are we stuck? And it's all and interconnected. How, exactly. And that's, that's how disease comes about, right? We all know we split the word up, dis-ease. When you're not in ease and things are flowing, you're going to have some sort of a physical ailment, whether it's major or a minor one. Right. Um, so again, the holistic nursing path, I guess I just learned there were so many other options of, of how to feel better. 
how to make things work. And it wasn't always a, a pill or a medicine. Sometimes you had to take the medicine away to really. Um, so well, I it's, guess, nice, it's nice to know that, yeah. I mean, I am talking to more and more nurses that are being introduced to more holistic paths. Mm -hmm. And that was not something you saw very often um, years ago. And right. it's nice to know that that is occurring now. It's, you know, not nearly on the scale that I believe it should be. Um, yeah. You know, most doctors and most nurse, nurses are still kind of oblivious to that whole mind, body, spirit connection or, oh. yeah, to, to a lot of those concepts. Right. Um, but, but it is now being taught in many cases and it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. very refreshing. So I'm, I'm glad you exactly. took it upon yourself to go down exactly. that route. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and along that path, I finally was then able to start ho doing home care because I had enough experience that they would let me do that. And I found like that's really where I, I felt a better connection because I could actually help and I could get involved with the family and see the environment because sometimes it's the environment making us ill. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I've really started to make an impact there working with the families and that personal one-on-one -on -one attention that you couldn't give in the hospitals or the, or the nursing homes. Um, and, and through, through my, my personal journey with all of that, I actually was turned on to Reiki through a patient and, and which was oh, yeah? very interesting because you know how we're placed in re in places for reasons, even though we don't know and I had come to probably the most challenging time in my life. And I really wasn't happy with this company. You know, I can go on and on about the place I was in. But I walked into this home of this patient and I instantly just felt like this is where I'm supposed to be. Mm, and right. She had like Indian motif and dream catchers and peace signs everywhere. And I'm sitting here I'm like, what am I doing here? And this woman ended up being, she was a nurse who had broken her knee dancing at a music festival. And the, that was the reason I was okay. there, was, gotcha. was to check out her incision after her surgery. And I'm like, you don't need me. Like, you're a nurse. You could have done this. You know? <laughs> right. And she said, everything happens for a reason, you know. But I really, I really connected with her. And she, she recognized in me instantly that I was not what I was supposed to be doing where, you know, there were other things meant for me. And she's like, you need to have a Reiki session, go see, go see Tracy. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like crying. I'm like feeling so like, this is exactly what I need. Right. And I did, I went and I saw Tracy and my world opened up and it started to shift. And all of a sudden I had a hospice opportunity, which like I had never thought about you know, death. I don't, I can't work with death. Right. I'm this right. person who loves life. But when I made that connection as the hospice nurse position really kind of fell into my heart and that's where I needed to be. And as I grew through Reiki and some of my other connections started to grow because as you, you know, what's the word, you know, the more you connect, the more your gifts show. Right. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. I probably didn't say that right, but the hospice. Well, like, really like, it, like any muscle, the more you flex it, the better, the stronger exactly. it gets, the better it gets, exactly. the more skilled it gets. I just, so hospice was where I needed to be at that time. And okay. I really feel that there's, there's a piece missing with the whole transition to the next world. Um, we can do so much with it. When you find peace inside, it's easier to transition to what's next. Um, right. and there, there's so many things we can talk about on that. So I don't really know where, cause the so, hospice nurse piece has kind of helped me personally as well evolve with this energy healing piece, because again, we're not just a physical form. So if, if you go into death with, you know, just with not really piecing your mind and your spirit together as you leave, it's, it's not as, as beautiful as it can be. Right. Um, I have heard so, that it, it's very helpful yeah. with the transitions. Well, what are some of the experiences that stick in your mind with, you know, you and, and the family or you and the person in, in hospice that are there any moments that stick in your mind that um, were very 
moving to you or an impactful for the patient or the family? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I have tons of stories and I, I want, I want to keep bringing it back to that, that whole picture, right. The holistic being, um, I mean, I, I guess I've had some stories. There's this one gentleman who, you, you know, you can tell that when they're fighting and they're hanging on for some reason, and, and even though they've done their work, there's still, there's something missing and they don't know what it is or the family doesn't know what it is. Um, but I remember this guy, Joe, who had actually had coffee with me the morning before he passed. So he was still sitting at his ta- at the table and we're drinking coffee. It's like this, I'm, I'll never not have my coffee. Um, but we had, the family had had a, a video baby monitor on his room the whole time so that they could watch him. And there were orbs flying around that room over his bed. Oh, wow. Like the whole time. And they, I you mean, know, I did see that, you know, I'm, it's just so beautiful to be reminded that we're not, we're not alone in this world and that right. there is somewhere that we're going, but to have the family see that the orbs on the monitor and they knew in their heart that it was their mom and dad and their brother who had passed that were there to, to just help ease the transition. Mm-hmm. And I remember this was actually before my father had passed and the daughter had, I mean, she was just a mess. So really working with the daughter and she wouldn't leave his side and she cried over him all the time because she wasn't ready to let go. So, so, you know, how are you going to go when your daughter is just not, not ready to let you leave? Right. Um, But we all, you know, so I worked with her and I also knew that there was something missing and that's where this connection is so important, right? We're all connected. The, the quantum field is all around us. Um, and, and as you're transitioning, you are kind of everywhere until you actually separate from your body. So I was able to really connect with him in that field, even though we weren't consciously talking. Gotcha. And he had, a, he had a son who hadn't, hadn't, he hadn't seen in years. So he was kind of holding on to that, my, you know, the son that he wanted to talk to. And when I pulled the daughter aside, she, she's like, oh, he hasn't talked to him in years and I won't even call him. And I said, well, give me the phone because I need to call him. Right. And I got the son on the phone and I let him, you know, he let me have it on the phone. For <laughs> right. And I'm like, I'm just telling you, this is it. This is your last chance to talk with him if if you're going to make pee and he's like no forget it I'm done and he actually hung up on me (laughs) but it had to be said and it had to be done because Joe knew he heard that he knew he's like okay this he's not coming he's not calling me so I don't need to wait anymore and he died that afternoon once the daughter was able to let go and he knew that the son wasn't coming um but there's just so much to it that people don't realize, you know, in the relationship thing and that last thing that has to be done. Um, I, and, and when he did pass, I wish I was there, but I hadn't been the, the family had called me and said that they had seen it on the monitor, which is wild. Right. Oh, okay. They saw four orbs come together behind the head of his bed and like lift him up. Like, from behind the bed. So they all came together and right behind his crown and picked him up. And like, if, you know, if that was my dad, how beautiful to have been able to see that. Um, So it just, I I find it Mm. surprising that uh, that the orbs actually showed up on Mm -hmm. something like that, that sort of video monitor. So I I, I had mentioned to you before that, you know, I, I, for a short while uh, dated a young lady. Um, She's an attorney. Um, and she also did some, she did some volunteer work through hospice and she was a Reiki mm-hmm. master as well. And she told me some very interesting stories. And the one that kind of stuck in my mind was, um, so she went to this person's house. She was assigned by hospice to help out and the family, you know, they didn't believe in any of this energy work. And so they really grumbled and really gave her a hard time, yeah. even though she was there to, in whatever capacity she was there to help. Uh, the patient, the person that was passing right. on. Um, but so she she worked her magic, did her thing, 
did some energy work and it, it seemed to make, make a difference. The patient seemed to be um, uh, responding to it and was more comfortable. And, uh, you know, she ended up coming back a couple times. Uh, the second time they grumbled a whole lot less and um, <laughs> right. Because I guess they were starting to see that something was happening, yeah. right. That there was, yeah. she was having definitely positive effects with this, uh, this witchcraft of hers, right? Yeah, <laughs> right? it's definitely uh, witchcraft. <laughs> yes. Um, and, you know, it, and in the end, the family was just, it just embraced her and everything she was doing. I'm almost getting emotional um, yeah. talking about this. Um, and for whatever reason, she was kind of assigned to a, uh, a different program or a different uh, patient was not able to go back. But that family that started off being so um, very difficult toward my friend um, continued to, you know, reach out to the hospice program. And it was like, we really want this person back. You know, <laughs> she was just wonderful. And the, the work she did through energy medicine, however it works, made a difference. And, um, so I, I don't know that she ever got a chance to connect with them again, but just the transition of the family, being able to witness and experience the um, energy work that was done to their family member and the um, amount of benefit that it had for that family member um, completely changed the tune of the whole family. Yeah. Well, yeah. that, and that's, that's what we see. And, you know, you, you mentioned witchcraft, witchcraft, like, I mean, my nursing bag doesn't just have my stethoscope in it. I've got my crystals, my essential oils. I've got my tuning forks and like a singing bowl. Like I bring whatever I can into the home. And as soon as they're open and ready for it, like we bring it out. And that's when the transformation is really seen. Um, so the beautiful thing about hospice too, which I like to get, you know, across to everyone is, is to not wait until the end, right? You can, you can be in a hospice program for six months, even up to a year, if we know that you are not seeking treatment. But that's the ideal time to start communicating about your feelings and about your traumas and your emotional issues, because releasing those things through vibrational frequency tools can help you find that peace and that comfort before it's truly the end. Um, right. So bringing Reiki in early is, is great. Um, you know, some essential oils that, that really get in the limbic system and help remove that emotional trauma that's stored in there. Um, some of, you know, the people that I've learned from are like Louise Hay, that you can heal your life. I mean, come on, right? She's got it nailed down to a science there. So right. to, bring, to bring those thoughts and the thought patterns into your, your life can help at least shift things to a point where you feel better, you don't need as many medications, the anxiety is reduced. And, and those who are open to talking about spirituality and what they think is next and what are they afraid of also see benefits from, from just bringing in the divine whatever you feel it is, whether it's God, the God consciousness, the, the star and soft. I mean, we all have a different, that's what it's called. It, it doesn't matter what you call it. It's that divine right. source energy that connects us all. But being, and being able to tune into that with my clients and my patients is how you connect and you can really figure out what's, what's going on in their mind and how, what kind of healing do they need? Um, I, so how, they how said, does, how, how do you explain Reiki to the family? Um, how do you describe this so-called energy medicine that you're going to be passing, you know, kind of through to their, their special person? You know, I, I have so many different explanations, I guess, depending on, where that person is on their journey, you know, are they science-based? Are they God, do they, you know, are they a religious fanatic? Well, let's, let's start it's with so science-based. Can, you, can one, you, you know, the science, like the science base, I, I kind of start to liken it to, to a computer about our body's a computer, an energetic 
computer. It's, you know, the electrical currents make everything work, the heart, the meridians, when things get blocked, like your computer may get a virus or you've pressed the buttons too many times and it just freezes up, but there's nothing wrong with it. It just okay. needs to be turned on and turned off like a reboot. Gotcha. So, so bringing in clear, pure source energy is, is like a reboot to your electrical system in a sense and can clear out some of that blocked energy, the traumas that get stuck in there. Um, but like scientifically, you can't, we can't, we haven't been able to prove it. There aren't any right. studies out there. You can't see it. You, you just, but, but you look at your cell phone and it, well, how does this work? I mean, this blows me away, right, right? right? It's, it's energy being sent somewhere and picked up somewhere. And that's also what Reiki well, is. Well, there are a lot of studies out there that, yeah. that support a lot of what Reiki is about. The challenge is a lot of that is done on um, the quantum level. So you get into well, quantum right. physics and quantum physics isn't really understood. Even, I mean, even the people that can figure out somehow the math behind it, that there's not a real layman's term way to describe it. So um, it, it is, it is a hard it's thing hard. to grasp. I, I, you know, I've been in this realm now for 10 years mm -hmm. and I still think it's the strangest thing ever. <laughs> right. I, uh, I did a, 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 a Reiki share last night um, and it's all done virtually these days since Corona started and you can feel uh -huh. other people's basically you feel other people's intention. Yeah. Right. And that's, that's kind of what it's all yeah. about. If you're practicing right. the art of Reiki or other energetic mm -hmm. modalities, um, you are maybe a little better at throwing or passing the energy to the other person, but um, basically it's, everybody can do it. And it is all yeah. centered around energy or uh, intention. And yeah, you could, you can even so much tell what part of the body often they're working on. Exactly. And it's, yes. it's really, it's really white, uh, quite, quite, uh, um, jaw dropping. And it, it just throws me for a loop each time um, because it wasn't part of my belief system. And I still have a hard time grasping it to be quite honest, yeah. but I, but I know it works. I, I, I like I, some I'm, it's just blown. It's like magic. You know, we, I don't understand it either, but I do right. because I get it. And, but it's hard to explain it in this human 3d world that we're in our brains can't comprehend it you just can't right. so right. you just have to convince someone to to just trust me just let's you know just do it and you'll see the difference um and it's they're just blown away that first yeah. time i think i had told you about um uh, someone else that i had dated for a while she's a nurse and um and she actually had, she was not feeling very good. She had a headache and had, she had some other stuff going on. Um, and we were probably about a half hour away from one another. And I said, Hey, you know, she's, she knows that I'm into all this boo boo stuff, <laughs> and, uh, but she's not really into this stuff. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, she's very logical, which is great. I'm very logical also, but um, anyway, so she's like, this is the way I feel. And I'm like, well, listen, I can send you some energy, some Reiki. And she's like, well, I believe in Western medicine. I said, that's great. Good. I mean, I'm, I'm glad you do. You need to. I believe in Western medicine also. Um, why don't you give this a try? She's like, okay, that's fine. And to make a long story short, she texted me and said, this is what I'm feeling. I could feel it. And, you know, and I got on the phone afterwards because I, I worked on her for, you know, a half hour or so. Yeah. And I explained to her, I said, Is, isn't that just it's just a little nuts, isn't it? You're basically yeah. feeling my intention. I'm intending yeah. good juju to be sent your way. And you could right. feel it. You were describing to me what a lot, how a lot of people describe energy medicine, um, how it, yeah. it kind of, it kind of bubbles up in your body and you can different experiences happen. And right. what she was describing is, is the same as what, the way that most people would describe it. And, uh, she was absolutely blown away by it. And probably two months later, maybe a month later, um, she ended up getting a um, Reiki attuned. And so now she is a nurse, right? Mm -hmm. um, and she, like yourself, is attuned with Reiki. And she can help people in not only a 
um, traditional Western medicine way, but she can also help people in a uh, spiritual uh, or whatever label you want to put on it, a a more holistic way. And again, I think things happen for a reason. I think I dated her for a short period of time so that I could help this very important person learn a new method to pass along to her her, uh, patients. Yeah. And, and I'm very passionate about sharing it with all the nurses I work with. Like every, as I'm a travel nurse, sometimes everywhere I go, I try to get a class going so that I can attune others. And that's, that's really been part of like my mission too, is to just get it out there into this traditional world. And, and that's most of the reason why I'm still in it because you know, we talk about this multidimensional healing and, and I am part of that as well, but I'm, I'm not ready to leave that, that traditional world, even though some days I just can't, Right. you know, it's, it's, it's really, you know, teachers and nurses have it the worst right now, Yes. but, but the, you know, that's where I'm supposed to be making a difference right now is trying to bridge that gap with that traditional world, the Western medicine, this crazy woo woo stuff. Right. And, and when, when you get me as a nurse, if you're open to learning about some of these other things, I'm, I'm all about that. You know, we talk again about these dimensions and it sounds crazy, but that the first dimension is, is really the earth and that iron core and learning to connect to that through meditation and going within and feeling that earth's pulse really connects you to that first dimension. And then the second dimension is where the animals, the crystals, you know, other different types of frequencies, the bugs, the bacteria kind of a thing. You have to learn how to, how to embrace all of that and, and take those frequencies in, in order to, to heal on the next level, right? right? We talk about this big shift into 5D if you haven't mastered one, two, three, and, and some of the four, how are, how is your soul really going to evolve when you're carrying all that density in 3d in our, in our bodies? Gotcha. Okay. So, so right now, like no matter who you are and what stage of life you're in, you should be looking at your, your traumas, your physical pain, because it's there for a reason. And how do we let go of that to find that peace and comfort? And, and again, let go of that stuff that's weighing us down so that we can evolve to what's next. And, you know, we can talk about the Pleiadians and the med beds, and then we sound a little woo woo, but right. they're out there and they're, they're re- waiting and ready for us. Right. And, and it, it's that plasma piece that, you know, we don't learn about that in school. They teach us solid liquid gas form, right? We know that water is water no matter what form it's in is it in a solid a liquid a gas state but they kind of don't teach us that that as the transition is happening it has to go somewhere and it goes into that plasma field which is then connected by the ether and that's where we're all connected is through that that space right right so when you can tune in to the the plasma, the ether, that's where the shifts happen. The quantum particle. Exactly. Right. Okay. And it's, it's, it's so hard to talk about because our human brains can't comprehend it, right. but you can feel it and you can know it, you know, depending on where you are in life, but, but the Reiki goes right in there and, and can kind of help that shift as you're transitioning. Right. Right. And, and we also know through physics that energy, we're energy and energy can't be created or destroyed, only transformed. So if you can grasp that concept before you pass on, it, it kind of helps because we know you're going somewhere. Where, where, where <laughs> we're all going, going somewhere. <laughs> we know you're going somewhere. So like, I really love the patients that are open to this, that I can really speak to this too, because I can help them remember who they are, you know, where they came from and where they're going. And it's, it makes it such a nice journey. Um, I, I most recently, maybe two months ago was, and this is, 
like five years ago, my patients were never open to this, you know, and I felt I was stuck in this world. And I'm like, how am I going to make, get my message through? And I just started to ask the divine to just place me in the right places with the people that want to be helped. And, and it's interesting how the patients I've been sent to have evolved over the years. But just recently I met a woman with Parkinson's and it's very severe and it was to a point where I had never seen Parkinson's symptoms this way. So I didn't even know how to help her for the first couple of visits. And I just would remember leaving saying, I don't even know how to help her as a nurse, right? right? Because there's general Parkinson's meds and yeah, we can manage that. But this was, this was a different level of something I'd never seen. And I just remember maybe my third visit, like I almost just left in tears feeling like she, she needs another nurse because I, this isn't what I do. (laughs) And the next visit, I noticed there was a huge bucket of crystals on her porch, like big, beautiful ones, like amethyst and smoky court. And I'm like, what are these doing on the porch? They need to be like under her bed, like all the time. Okay. So, so I just found this, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm doing this. Right. And I brought them in and I'm like, what are these doing outside? And her face lit up because she recognized that Mm. I connect with them. Right. So we instantly connected over the crystals and she knew what they were for. Obviously she had bought them. And I'm like, here, put these chunks of amethyst around you, put them within four feet. They're calming. They help the nerves. They help your connection. Amethyst, right? Put the smoky quartz near your root. Let's get you grounded so that the the energy can flow. But she knew what to do with them, but she had forgotten because the last five years she's been consumed with Parkinson's, right? right? And, and, one thing that's so important when you get a disease, you can't let that disease become you. You're still a person. You're still that starlight, that, that love that came from somewhere with a disease, right? You're not a cancer patient. You are a person with cancer that we need to, right? So, so back to the Parkinson's, sorry. Um, I had to just help her remember who she was. And then comes out that she used to make her own essential oils, her own hydrosols from plants. The husband brings out like her machine and puts it in the bedroom so she can look at it and remember who she was. Right. And, and we've really done some, and then we did Reiki and we've really done some work with, with how did she get here? You know, what traumas set her off to this point? Because Parkinson's has to do with not being able to control things. Right. So, so we've worked with some of her traumas in the past as a child, she had, you know, things that have happened through over the years. And they're all things that are going to block her energetic field, her meridians that are going to cause problems. Um, And, and then all, then she brings out, her husband brings out the Pleiadian agenda Okay. And the alchemy of the nine dimensions. And I'm like, yes, now I can really talk to her about, you know, the other beings that, that are here. Um, and ironically, she's going to have a med bed session. <laughs> oh, is that right? So connected to the Pleiadians. But over this course of the two months, her symptoms have been managed to a much better level because she's letting go of some of these things that she's been carrying around. And she's remembering who she is. And that's the beautiful part is that when it is her time to go, whether it's six months or a year from now, because I am her hospice nurse, right? For a reason, she's at least come to a place where she's remembered who she is, you know, where she came from and she knows where she's going. So we're just trying to work out all this stuff here on earth before she's ready to go, you know, but it's just so neat to see the transition and these vibrational tools really work. The crystals are frequencies. They get in there. Like again, the plasma, the ether, they get their frequency in there as our molecules are moving around and they, they elevate you and they cleanse and they clear things or they bring something in that you really need. 
So it's, it's just learning and, and being open to it. Even if you think it's silly, just be open and see how, see how it shifts for you. Well, that's um, what I tell people, you know, um, just try it because they might be surprised. I mean, I, I was certainly surprised. I didn't, I went to a, a seminar. It was basically a motivational seminar. It was a Tony Robbins event. And when you think of Tony Robbins, you don't think of like energy medicine, right? Right, right. <laughs> um, so I was actually uh, supporting, um, I was a crew member. So I was not a participant. I was kind of behind the scenes. And behind the scenes, he actually encourages um, practices that are a little more, less conventional that, than what he presents to his typical um, uh, participants. And... Yeah, I, I got a, quite a wallop that weekend, uh, not only from him, but a lot of the other crew members, which happened to be um, holistic practitioners. It was just one thing after another, after another. And I was in disbelief for most of the weekend, but I could not prove otherwise. And they were just, it was one thing after another, after another, after another. And um, I left there that weekend with my eyes wide open. Um, but if you could just get people to do a session, Right. That, I, I, I don't know. If, I don't know if I yeah. would have quite honestly. I mean, yeah. I, it, it all just, it was, <laughs> it was very unusual the way it all happened to me, but if you can get someone to have a session yeah. to feel it, to experience it. Yeah. Um, eight times out of 10, I would say they're curious enough that they're going to go back because they feel better and, um, and, and because it's real. Um, yeah. Even if it, they're pretty shut, real. shut down. Yeah. yeah. I, I have my oldest son is in like the computer tech world and and I'm just like, can you make a device, please, so that we can see this Reiki? Like, yeah. why? Why haven't we come up with that yet? That, well, they, so we they, can, uh, they are. You know? they, they are coming up with devices that um, oh. emit very similar frequencies um, that they claim that, you know, uh, Reiki masters or, um, you know, very high vibrating individuals can emit. And uh, I've actually experienced uh, two of them and they feel very much like Reiki. And it's interesting because one of them, um, you know, I've sat, sat next to the thing for about 20 minutes and I got a, a text message and I reached over and grabbed my phone and I shouldn't have, I should have just kind of been in the moment, but I wasn't, I wasn't. Yeah. So I grabbed my phone and my phone actually kind of stopped working. Um, yeah. it, it doesn't work within that field. Um, and I tried texting. I tried a couple things and my phone just wouldn't work with that when that within that field. And I put it back over there. And of course, after the session, I felt amazing. Um, it was a machine like you're talking about that emits yeah. uh, healing frequencies. And, uh, you know, I told the practitioner uh, that set me up with this thing or the person that set me up with this thing. And I was like, you know, what's the deal with the phone? It doesn't work. And like, well, you know, it's very strong frequencies and it's emitting. These are real frequencies that you're feeling. And it interferes with your phone. I um, mean, you're generally speaking, phones don't do not work if they're too close to the machine. And yeah. so I think that's all very I, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 can, I can relate to that. I, the, te the Tesla, the bio healer, the, the Tesla coil energy, the products they're making with that. I've got the bio healer, the little device mm -hmm. that you put under, you know, just in your space. And yeah, it's Reiki in a bottle. That's yeah. kind of what yeah. I'm calling. I'm, I'm bringing it around, you know, but you really have to use it. Um, but the, the technology is definitely there. I guess I just want to see it. Like I want, I want to see it coming out of my hands. Like I want to right. see the visual. I know, like, I know. You know? Because I, I know you're right about the computer. Sometimes like my phone doesn't even work. If I'm in that space, I can't get it to work because yes. it's, it's just too much. Yes. Um, but there, I know the technology is out there. I'm using it. I have it. I actually just ordered one of those eye pyramids. Um, okay. That's another product that's made. I know one of the gentlemen who's involved in that. Um, but that's just going to kind of harness all this plasma ether healing yeah, stuff. I, I, I think it'll about. hopefully help people to shift a little. I mean, if, I, I, I think for the scientific people mm -hmm. out there, the people that um, they're, they're going to buy into a machine mm -hmm. producing a particular um, frequency may be a little yeah. easier than allowing yeah. their mind to believe that yeah. you Let as an individual. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're like, well, the people can't do it, but a machine certainly can. So, right. but yeah. if you can then prove then that the, 
the machine was actually created to duplicate what the people are producing or rather um, yes. um, moving through them, then maybe that'll raise an eyebrow and maybe that'll get more people on board with this whole concept. That's, that's my hope. My hope. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think again, it's just so important to start, to start healing now. Like, what are you waiting for? I had a woman say to me the other day, I'm ready to rest in peace. Well, why aren't we living in peace? Like we should feel this as we're going through life. Right. And we need to, again, we need to let go of this stuff from the past that helped us become who we are, but it's not who we are. We have to let it go. And then you're opened up to new things and, and more love and light that comes in for healing. And then you get more experience as more on your path. Um, but the, it's just important to be ready to go when it's time and it makes it so much more beautiful. Um, yeah. And I, you know, I, I can't be everybody's hospice nurses. I'm in Boulder. Right. But there's still, there's still a way that I can help if a family's called, you know, to what we do, to this energy work, to this quantum field stuff. Right. Um, I, I was sent to a nursing home where a woman was 107 and she hadn't, she had been in bed for a month and everybody's just wondering, like, why is she still here? Why is she still here? So they sent me, you know, I had a kind of a crazy title for a while, the angel of death, because I knew how to bring it on. <laughs> enough, okay. but, but I, you know, I'd go in and I, I really, I just sat with her. I sat with her and I asked her, I said, what, what's keeping you here? Not, you know, what's keeping you here? And I mean, I just got chills. Um, she didn't want to die alone. She did not want to die alone. She was 107 and her kids were not around anymore. Right. Oh, wow. but right. 80, 90 year old people hit up and she was in this home and she had a, a power of attorney, just a person just managing her thing. But, but she had no connection anymore. She did not want to die alone. And in a, you know, in a nursing home, there, I'm sure there's some great ones out there, but this aide would just come in, change her, reposition her, and then leave. And that's the only attention she really got was to make sure she was clean. So, I mean, when she told me that, like it broke my heart and she didn't want to die alone. And I, I set her up with a sitter, somebody who came in for six hours to just sit. And to just be with her. And she passed during that time. I mean, it's, it's not hard. <laughs> right. But this poor woman, just she just didn't want to go alone. I, I, for whatever reason. Um, so you just, there's, there's just so much out there. there. There are ways I can help if, if you let me. And it's fun and I'm passionate about it, you know. It's, well, you do you do yeah. energy work and treatments outside of hospice as well, right? So people I can do. reach out to you Absolutely. and you can work with them. In fact, there are, I guess, other modalities. Um, do you have time to uh, yeah. talk about? There are. There's one, there's one other, there's so many energy healings, right? I mean, I've done the pranic healing. The Reiki is from one lineage. But there's a um, another lineage which goes through, through Jesus, the ascended master and Melchizedek and up, you know, right. a different line. And it's called the rising star. And it's, it's a really a three week transformation. I found where, when you bring in this rising star energy, it works on each chakra for a whole day for three weeks. So it goes up, it goes all the way down for seven days through, you know, all your chakras, and then it repeats back up and then it repeats back down. So for the complete three weeks, you're sensing it's, it's very, it's transformative. Wow. I don't know what the word is. And it, it, you can feel it working. You, well, you can so feel it's a particular that particular frequency and it's a particular program and it just goes on exactly. for a couple of weeks. Yeah. It lasts for three weeks. And, and I really recommend three sessions in a row. You know, three is very powerful as a number anyway, but three times three um, sessions, it's a whole nine week series. And in the beginning and the end of the nine weeks, you just see like amazing transformation and healing, but you can actually feel it working. Like, you wow. know what day it is. Oh, well, today's a heart chakra day. And 
and you can feel it. And then maybe something comes up or you're extra emotional or, you know, right. like, but it's so powerful. And that's one that I always recommend when you're really stuck, you're just stuck. Right. So you really kind of need some, some extra oomph to kind of clear out and get you focused on track. And there's just some amazing stories that come out of that one. And that can be done distantly too. And it's, it's less than an hour, just like and, a week. And for all of these, you know, different modalities, you don't have to have like a religious belief or necessarily believe no. in, uh, you know, s- some of the names or terminologies that you you've used. It's um, it, it's really kind of a, um, a, a programming, a frequency exactly. programming. And, you know, so if you don't resonate with a particular name that's used um, that right. that's fine, it's, but I think what a lot of people don't realize that, that haven't had this sort of work is, um, you know, you had mentioned you can actually feel it work on your heart. You can work, you feel it work on other chakras. And that's, that's so true. You can yeah. feel particular frequencies focus on different areas of the body. And, yeah. you know, I, again, it, it's, it, for me, it's still jaw dropping every single time. And that's one of the reasons I'm, I'm so passionate about this is because I find it so fascinating. I know. Fascinating and <laughs> weird and awesome. <laughs> we should do rising star. Um, yeah. But, and then if you remember again, this whole collective consciousness, we're all connected. Every time you heal something in yourself, it, it affects the people around you and the people in your family and in your, in, in your energy field. And sure. I see tremendous shifts with my son, with the man in my life, like even when I have a healing, because it just, it radiates out and it does go back seven generations and seven generations forward. Cause you know, this 3d time dimensional thing we're in, this is the only place time exists. So when you get into that quantum field and you can heal, you know, different parts of the timeline. Right. Um, so it's just, it's oh, and, and, and again, just to kind of it. dumb it down again, yeah. you know, I, I, I'm always trying to play both sides of the coin. I, I'd love yeah. to hear about, you know, the practitioner's version. And then I also like to try and frame it in a way that I shouldn't say non-believer, but the person that isn't familiar with these, this terminology, or maybe some of these woo-woo terms or however you want to put yeah. it, um, can um, palate, uh, make it a little bit more palatable. And, but so basically what you're saying, if, if you feel good, you're going to make the people around you feel good. So in a very basic sense, if one person heals, the people that they're around are going to feel better. They're also going to, in a sense, heal. Uh, if you want to take it a step further, I mean, I believe, I, I absolutely believe what you're saying. But yeah. from a skeptic's perspective, I yeah. would say if a person in your core mm-hmm. feels better, the people directly around that person are going to feel better. So just, you just embrace it all, no matter how you label it, it's a good thing. It really is. And there are no words to describe it in a way that we can fully understand. We just know that, but it it's there. It works just like your cell phone works, even though you're, you know, how, I don't know, it works. It's it's something. And, and like you said, computer program, I mean, they're really, that's that vibrational medicine book. Um, it's a, the body is a computer type, right? We have DNA, it's the program, the chakras, energy, it's, it's all has to work together. Yes. Um, but, but when I attune someone to Reiki, it's a program. I'm just giving you a program. And even just an attunement is a healing itself because it raises your vibration. But now you have the program so that you can do it just like you turn your computer on and you open up that app. It's a program. Mm-hmm. It's an update. And it's, it's that easy. Exactly. It, it's that easy. And if you're open to it, you'll see the benefits of it. Um, and sometimes even if you're not open to it, you'll see the benefits to it. Well, for sure. Yeah. 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 Um, I could go into plenty of stories that yeah. support that. <laughs> <laughs> so. yeah, I know. Um, th- those are the people that I see the impact. You know, the cancer patients who there are miracles out there. There really are miracles out there. If you're really that willing to do the work, you have to understand why you got the cancer in the first place. 
because you just can't go along with treating the symptom. You have to get in into the why. Why is the cancer causing the disease? And that's where the miracles really can happen. Um, yes. So. Well, th this has been amazing. Is there anything um, else that you'd like to add? I just think it's so important to just be open right now. And, and if you're someone in, you know, you're going to the doctor and you're taking all these medicines and there, it's not working for you, then you should question that because there are other yes. ways, yes. you know, there's some people that, that, that works for, that's great. But if it's not working for you, there's a reason and we can, we can talk about it. We can figure it out.